Hello there and welcome to this series of videos looking to go through the first year content of A-Level Maths. Here we're on functions and so you can work through exercise 2e. So what is a function? A function is a piece of algebra that takes one set of values, generally called the domain, to another set of values, generally called the range. Um, so for example, in the function where we have f of x equals x squared, then we have a set of values which uh, contains five numbers in this case here, and the range contains the square of all of those numbers. So effectively, these are our inputs into our function, and these are the outputs of that function. Okay, the roots of a function are what values of x will make f of x equal 0. Okay, so a root is something, is a value of x where that function will equal 0. Okay, so let's go through a few example questions here. The functions f and g are given by f of x equals 2x minus 10 and g of x equals x squared minus 9. Now, just in case something appears like this, x, funny e symbol, and then funny r symbol. Now, this literally means x exists in, this e, think of this as exists in, and this set of, uh, this r here is the set of real numbers. Sometimes you may see an n, which means it's a natural number, or a z, which means it's a natural number, um, with just a, a whole number, and a z can include some negative numbers as well, or all of the negative numbers. So the first thing we're going to do with this is find the values of f of 5 and g of 10. Now what this means here is we're going to choose 5 as our input letter, input value, and you need to work out the output value. So in this case here, all we do is we replace any x's with 5's in our function. So 2 times 5 is 10, take away the 10, and we get a 0. So what we could say here is that 5 is the root of f of x. The same for g of x, so this time we want to work out g of 10. So in this case here we put 10 into our function where the x's go. So that's going to be 10 squared is 100, take away 9 and you get 91. Part B, find the set of values for which f of x equals g of x. So what we'll do there is we'll just put each of the functions equal to each other and make a little equation out of that. And then we'll just go ahead and solve this equation. So what we want is to move everything onto one side because it looks like it's going to make us a quadratic equation. So move all the x's and numbers onto one side. And now remember, the way that we solve a quadratic equation is we first check if we can factorise it. Now in this case here, we can factorise it. x minus 1 and x minus 1. So in this case here, we have two expressions that times together to make a 0. So hence, either one of those expressions could equal 0. So x minus 1 could equal 0, so therefore x equals, minus, x equals 1. Okay, so that was a bit of a simple question to do with um, functions. Here we have another function, and we have a couple of questions here to do with this. First thing, f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 5, for x exists in the real numbers. Uh, part A asks for us to find f of x in the form x plus p squared plus q. Now this here is definitely what completing the square looks like. So in this case here, we're going to have to complete the square. And if you're a bit shaky on completing the square, then have a look at the last video. So what we need to do, remember, is we need to take the first two terms and put them inside a bracket. So it's going to be x plus, and then half of the 6 is 3 squared. Now to balance this out, we need to take away a 9, because that's 3 squared, and take away that 5, because we had to take away a 5 from above. 
So in this case here, x plus 3 squared minus 14 is going to be the answer. Part B, hence or otherwise, find the roots of f of x, leaving your answers in third form. Now it says hence here, so we should be able to continue on from our part A. That's what hence means. So if we want to find the roots of f of x, then what we need to do is we need to set what we had from part A equal to 0 and work out what x needs to be. So add 14 onto the other side, square root, and remember when you square root you're going to get a positive or negative root 14. Take away the 3 onto the other side, and that's what you get. You get x equals minus 3 plus or minus root 14. So effectively two answers here, one with a plus value and one with a negative value. Part C now, write down the minimum value of f of x and state the value of x for which this occurs. So the minimum value that this function can take, um, if x is very small then that's going to be very big and uh, same with big values of x. So using part A we can answer part C, write down the minimum value of f of x and state which value of x this occurs for. Now what we have here is x plus 3 squared. Now because this is being squared, it must therefore be greater than or equal to 0. The reason is because whenever you square a negative number, you're going to get a positive number. So say for example x was say minus 10. That will give us a minus 7 inside that square. And minus 7 squared is 49. So all of a sudden we've gone from a negative number up to a big positive number. So we don't want to choose any low ne x numbers because that will give us a big square. We don't want to choose any big x numbers because that will give us a big square as well. The best thing we can do if we want to minimise this expression in here is to set this bracket equal to 0. So, in which case x here is going to have to equal minus 3 to get this bracket equal to 0 and in which case that will cancel out this term here and make it a 0 in which case the minimum value of this function here is going to be 14. So for this expression here the lowest output number that this could have is minus 14. And this happens when x is the number minus 3. Okay, a slightly more difficult question. Now find the roots of the function x to the power of 6 plus 7x cubed minus 8. So we're going to do this in a very similar way. We're going to look for roots. So we need this equation to equal 0. Now one way you could do this, in this case here they've just gone straight to x3 to the plus 8 and x3 minus 1. What you could have done is by setting, now notice here it looks sort of like a quadratic. Uh, we've got x cubed and x to the power of 6. What you could do is substitute in y equals x cubed to start with and we would therefore know that x squared would equal x cubed squared which will be timesing those powers will give us a 6. So what we could have done was to have rewritten this as y to the power of 6 plus 7y, sorry not 6 to the power of 6, y squared because that's what x to the power of 6 is plus 7y minus 8 and we would have got y plus 8 and y minus 1, and then we would have gone back and substituted in y for x cubed. Now in this case here we need the roots, so we need this expression here to equal 0. So either x cubed equals minus 8, in which case x is minus 2, or x cubed will equal 1, in which case x will equal 1. Okay, so that's it then. Have a go at some of these questions on your own. Pause the video 
and take your time having to go through these questions. Okay, well done for pausing the video and having to go at some of these questions on your own. Hopefully you've persevered through these questions. If I'm working through them and I get to a point where, you, where you've uh, dropped off, then pause the video at that point and try and finish the video on, try and finish the question on your own. So in this case here, f of x equals x squared minus 2x, where x is a real number. Given that f of a, so the input number here is a, and the output number is 8, find out what that input number could have been. So what we'll do then is we'll input a into our equation, into our function, and the output of this is going to be 8. Okay, so let's try and solve this now. We've got a quadratic equation here, so we need to make 0 on one side. Let's try factorising. So in this case here, it times is to make minus 8, but adds to make minus 2. I think this is the answer here. x, sorry, a minus 4 and a plus 2. So in which case a is either equal to 4 or a is equal to minus 2. Okay, for part 6b here, I've chosen 6b because it's a very typical question that will appear on an exam. Um, f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 2. Explain why f of x is greater than 0. So, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to complete the square, and then hopefully we're going to have a square component plus maybe a positive number, and that will definitely then be greater than 0. So, take x squared minus 2x plus 2 and complete the square. So it's going to be x minus 1, from halving the minus 2, squared. And then we take away minus 1 squared, which is take away 1. And then plus the 2 on at the end. So therefore, x minus 1 squared, and then simplify these numbers on the end, we give us plus 1. Now this expression here must be strictly greater than 0, because when we square any value, we're going to get something that's either bigger than or equal to 0. Remember, when x is a 1 here, that will give us a, a bracket of 0, so 0 squared is 0, so it could potentially equal 0 in this case. But when we then add on 1 to both sides, or when we add on 1, we're definitely going to get something that's bigger than or equal to 1, in which case this is bigger than 0. Okay, so if you need to prove that a function is bigger than 0, complete the square of it, and then show that you've got something squared, and then maybe plus a positive term that will definitely be bigger than zero. Okay, right. So make sure you have a definitely have a practice through exercise two e. Remember, watching this video is only ten percent of the effort. Ninety percent of the learning and ninety percent of the effort is going to come through working through questions in these exercises. So. Well done for watching the video, but spend some time working through these questions. Thanks for watching.